Hi folks, this video is to back up the A-Level Unit 4 Edexcel course, uh, particularly the question in 2016 where we are looking at uh, volcanic and seismic landforms uh, and the differences between them. Now, in order to really understand these landforms, intrusive, extrusive, volcanic, and seismic landforms, you need to understand a bit of the geological theory that underpins them. So that's what this video is going to be about, explaining how these landforms develop so you can understand more easily. First thing to do is to actually start um, with the, the world as a whole. Now some of this is going to be quite complex geology, um, so it may need re-watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. We need to start off with our idea of the world. We're aware that the world is made up of plate boundaries. In the dark colours I've got continental boundaries, uh, so continental plates. In the blue we've got the, uh, the oceanic plates sat on top of the uh, asthenosphere which is itself sat on top of the mantle. So if we're going to zoom into that, we have got uh, in blue our ocean plates, in the black our continental plates. These are sat on top of the asthenosphere, which itself sits on top of the mantle. So let's work from the mantle outwards. The mantle is 2900 degrees C. You work your way up to the asthenosphere. Um, there's a boundary between the mantle and the asthenosphere, and that is called the uh, the Moho or the Mohorovich boundary, but it's generally known as the Moho. This is just the boundary between the two. Worth noting. The asthenosphere is kind of the consistency of tuna mayonnaise. It's not quite solid. It's not quite liquid. The asthenosphere holds the lithospheric plates. So the oceanic plates part of the lithosphere, as are the continental plates. All of that's the lithosphere. It sits in the asthenosphere, which kind of supports it, and beneath that's the mantle. Now you will notice as well that I have labelled these psi ma and psi al. Now this follows on from our lesson that we've done on this, but the psi ma is a combination of silica and magnesia. These are the main elements that make up the psi ma. Now psi ma plates are generally a lot more dense. Thinner, but they are very dense and they lead to basaltic rocks being formed. So these are more dense. Comparatively, we have psi al. This is silica and aluminium. Now silica and aluminium, psi al, is less dense. And this is why continental crust um, firstly uh, sits higher than oceanic crust. It's why it's thicker because it's less dense in the same way that a sponge is less dense uh, than a solid piece of plastic. But also it sits higher in the asthenosphere. Imagine it floating in the asthenosphere. It's sitting and it'll sit a little higher because it's not as dense. Sima sits a little lower because it's more dense. So oceanic crust is made up of Sima and continental crust made of Sial. This will become important later. 
There is a little bit of Cyma around the bottom of uh, the continental crust. We don't need to worry about that too much at this stage. So these plates are sat on the asthenosphere. The oceanic plates will always subduct underneath the continental plates because of the density difference. Cyma being more dense than the Cyal. So these plates will always subduct underneath. Questions, of course, why do these plates move and why do they subduct? The reason that the plates move is because of convection currents in the mantle. Heat rises, comes up towards the moho, and moves off around the Earth. So if you look at that in perhaps a slightly smaller view, these convection currents are moving like this. So that's what's pulling the plates apart. Heat rising, and that heat rising causes the magma to rise up through the asthenosphere at a divergent boundary. So the plates are moving apart from each other, the magma is rising up and it's filling in that gap that's being made and it's coming out here. And that as lava. Now this is really hot magma. It is basaltic, so it's quite low in silica content. The silica that is there tends to be uh, mainly the cyma, the silicon um, and silica and magnesium. It's really hot, and it's relatively speaking low in silica, which means that it is less dense. Think of magma like custard. The more powder you add, that's like silica. So if you add more silica in, it becomes more dense, it becomes more thick. In this case, there's not much silica, so it's not as thick. Now, the other place uh, where uh, you're going to be getting magma rising up is at subduction zones, but this is because of the intense pressure that's building up at the boundary. The heat and the pressure being built up at the boundary here causes the magma to heat and then like a lava lamp it'll cut its way through the cyal and reach the surface. And when it reaches the surface it forms a volcano. However, in these volcanoes there's a lot more silica. It's like the powder being added to the custard, it's thickening it up. Why is there more silica? Because it's cutting its way through all of this continental crust. And as it cuts its way through, it picks up impurities, most of which are silica. So it's cooling off, it's picking up more silica, so it's becoming thicker becoming more dense. So you've got very hot, very runny, uh, basaltic magma over here. You've got much thicker, cooler, high silica content magma here. This tends to be more like sort of rhyolitic or andesitic type magma. And I'll come back to these terms a little bit later. So this is where the magma is coming from for uh, the uh, extrusive features. It's also where the magma is coming from for the intrusive features. Because it may be some of that magma is created, works its way up and never reaches the surface. And it gets stuck inside the rock. So that's where an intrusive feature begins to form. This is our pluton.
and that's the basis for all intrusive features. As for seismic features, they come from the plates moving. It's not just from earthquakes, there are some from earthquakes and we'll go into the details of that later, but a lot of it comes just from the plates moving, rift valleys appearing, or um, ridges under the sea, trenches forming, the volcanoes that come out are the volcanic, um, obviously the volcanic features, but there's also these trenches, these valleys, and if there are plates, continental plates that come together, you get collision zones, where two lumps of sial push into each other, and they push together and squeeze upwards. Another thing you may have noticed about the Sial compared to the Sima is that where it goes up, i.e. the altitude increases, it also sits lower in the asthenosphere. Think of it like an ice cube. If you have a large ice cube in your drink, it will sit half in the uh, drink, half out of the drink. If you have a small ice cube, it'll sit half in the drink, half out of the drink. So it doesn't matter on the size, the ice cube will sit sort of halfway submerged. Same with the plates. It's just that because these are thinner, and more dense, they will sit with the, uh, like the, the water line or the, uh, the asthenosphere, uh, would sit about there, all the way through them. It does create this curious shape though, where actually you've got a lot of rock under the surface as well as above the surface, like, uh, like an iceberg. So to recap, we have our mantle, where the heat is rising, creating convection currents, and that's what drives the plates apart from each other, and also provides the magma for our volcanoes at the uh, divergent boundaries. We have our asthenosphere, which is a semi-liquid layer. It allows the plates to sit in it, and it allows them to move. Kind of the consistency of tuna mayo. We have our lithosphere, made up of oceanic plates, which are made from cyma, or silica and magnesium compounds. We have our continental plates, which are made up from silica and aluminium compounds. These together form the lithosphere. And magma is created at subduction zones from the heat of the Sima oceanic plate and the mainly Sial continental plate grinding past each other and releasing magma. Now this is the basic theory. I'm going to be referring back to these ideas and these terms shortly as we go through the intrusive, extrusive and seismic features. <laughs>